The election is now underway and each of the parties has started with the message they think is voters want to hear. So what's this election really going to be about? We've assembled our political watchers panel. Caitlin Urquhart is a lawyer, often representing Indigenous groups. She's also a former NDP executive member. Jillian Pearson is co-chair for Equal Voice, a child care advocate and a former PC candidate. And Hassan Hai is probably best known as a Murbai. He founded the Beard and Mustache Club. He's involved with Project Kindness and is a former Liberal candidate. Welcome, all three of you. Hello. Hello. So we've got the first push from the three main parties about what they think this election should be about. Let's just recap. Here's what their message was on Friday. This election will be about your choice on leadership, who you want to lead the province through the pandemic, who you want to lead the, through the economic challenge. Jobs and growth, and who has a plan to bring back jobs and get our economy growing again? Affordability for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. We're very concerned about uh, what's happening, what the future is going to hold for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. And we're quite concerned about what's going to happen with our health care system. Okay, so those were the three messages that we heard. Um, Hassan, let's start with you. Which of those messages resonates most with you and do you think is going to resonate with voters? Um, I mean, there was... There were similarities and differences, obviously, with all three. Um, I would say uh, Andrew Fury out of the gates uh, had the longest message, had a lot to say uh, about what they've been doing. Uh, there is some certainly advantages of being incumbents. Uh, they can speak to their own track record, record and what they've been doing. And there was generally a theme of hope and looking forward and what we can do. Uh, and certainly referencing uh, the COVID response. Uh, it's no surprise to anyone that Newfoundland Labrador is doing great. Um, so I would say out of the three, that one's uh, stuck out the most, uh, particularly on, on the, uh, the tone of the themes as well. Okay, Caitlin Urquhart, let's go to you. W what do you think about uh, what you heard there? So, I mean, for me, and I think probably for most vo voters, those are all sort of slogany. They're, they all sound great. I mean, leadership, jobs and growth, affordability, who doesn't want all of those things? I think they're, um, you know, politics. Politicians are politicking, and and that's what they'll do. Um, for me, the, you know, it, it'll. I'm waiting to see what the details are. And when we're talking about jobs and growth, are we talking about more oil and gas, which both the Liberals and the Conservatives have, or the PCs have um, talked about uh, supporting that industry? And we're in a climate crisis. That's concerning to me. Um, are we talking about uh, continuing the PC legacy of uh, building mega mega projects in Labrador and uh, doing Gull Island? Like that's very concerning to me. Um, Ultimately, I will wait to see what they actually mean and uh, what their platforms are. I completely agree with Caitlin that if we want to engage voters in an election that they might not want to be a part of, they're going to want some details. So I'm going to be looking to see what those details are and how they can differentiate themselves and communicate that adequately to the electorate. You mentioned that voters may in fact not want an election. Uh, it is unusual to have a winter election. What do you make about the rationale that we've heard so far from the Liberals uh, about why there needs to be an election now and the concern we've heard from other parties that this may be in fact to try and get a majority before Moya Green's economic report may come out with some uncomfortable truths. Jillian, let's continue with you. So I think Premier Fury did come out and essentially say that uh, his administration is looking to secure a majority uh, government in order to get a mandate. Uh, what's so pressing that they need a majority government right now before that report is released? If it's important enough to call an election because you need a majority, um, then it should be equally as important to let the electorate know what exactly your plans are. Um, so I think that the timing is... Uh, is putting a little more power over fairness in terms of what the electorate should expect from uh, you know, democracy and from government. Hassan, you're nodding there. Why don't you jump in? <laughs> uh, excellent points uh, from Jillian as well. Um, you know, I think with the, the pending uh, report uh, coming out uh, in a while and not having those results or any of the findings presented to voters, uh, I think certainly may, 
casts a, a bit of suspicion over the, the reasons why we're having an election now. Yes, uh, voters know that an election is required. Why today? I mean, winter aside and it being a terrible time for candidates and everyone to get on board and, um, you know, on the heels of, of a number, uh, what is it, 16 or 17 funding announcements just prior to that, um, I think, you know, why not wait two months? Um, and uh, I think they're going to have to answer for that. Uh, voters certainly are keen on that. And I think the PCs uh, and the NDP, uh, my, my suspicion is they, they'll rightfully capitalize on what are you hiding? Uh, I'm not saying that they are, but, you know, they're, these are questions that they're going to have to answer. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, I think building on what, what Jillian and Hassan have said, it's, um, you know, what's the difference between now calling the election now and calling it after February if uh, Premier Fury is saying he wants this to be a mandate election where the people are giving him a mandate? Well, it's it's a lot harder to do when we are not clear on what we're giving you a mandate to do. Um, I think also, uh, rightfully, the both the NDP and the PC party can, can really, um, you know, lean on the fact that during this pandemic, there was an all party committee that actually worked very hard. Uh, and from everything we heard throughout the, the press releases was instrumental in ensuring that the path that the that this government took in protecting us all and uh, from the pandemic was really an all party uh, um, uh, work in, you know, work from all parties on all sides. And right now with a, with a minority, it means that they really have to work collaboratively. They have to do these things together. And uh, maybe that's actually a better way to properly reflect the diversity of opinions in our province. And uh, so I, I think I'm not personally convinced that, that they need a majority. I think really uh, there's a, a ton of incredible activists who have actually uh, decided to put their names forward this time. Constituents should be looking at who is running in their riding or in their district. And uh, there's some really interesting folks on the ballot this time. And I, I'm just not convinced that a majority is what's needed. Perhaps actually collaboration and a requirement to reach across the aisles is, uh, is what's best for this province, because so far that has that served us really well. Well, it'll be interesting to see who puts their name forward on those uh, ballots. That We've still got about another week till we have those final candidate lists. Thank you very much for all three of you for joining me and sharing your opinions thus far. Thank you. Thank you for having us.